Okay. Right. Here we are. Uh, at, uh, the uh, Winter Black Flow Championship. In Milton Keynes, round 15. Austin and Lewis up next. I just watched uh, a very exciting game that was commentated on by Paul Allen um, between Austin and Phil. Austin, at that point, was two games ahead. He lost to Phil, so he's now in the final race. So he's looking to get back onto winning terms in this game. He was on an eight winning streak before that loss. Uh, obviously uh, had to end sometime. Phil was the one to do it. Lewis will be starting okay. the game. Here we are. Uh... I've closed it, and hopefully you won't hear uh, background noises. Okay, so Lewis has taken his seven tiles. He's got uh, five consonants, two vowels. Unmilt is what I would initially think about playing. I'm sure you can't unmilt a cow. Oh, you can unmilt a cow. No, you can't. It's been challenged off. Lewis thought the same as me. Not sure uh, why someone of Lewis's calibre would definitely know that milks wasn't a word, but he uh, did play it. Maybe he thought he'd sneak it past Austin, but Austin uh, challenged it off straight away. Okay, so Austin will be making the first move on the board. He's got a balanced rack, three vowels, four consonants, duplicate A's, the X for scoring. Jess is showing me quackle and there is a bonus. If Austin sees it, it will score a huge 96, add Nexel. Not one I knew. You would imagine it's in Austin's uh, vocabulary, so when he sees it, he'll be sticking it down. Jess is pointing out to me that she did see it, so well done, Jess. Okay, I heard Austin's score announced as 44, so he's missed the bonus. Six of the seven letters in Adnexal. He's played Adnexal, A D E N E X A. Interesting to hear his thoughts after the game about uh, how sure he was of Adnexal. So, 44 point lead, not to be sniffed at. We know Lewis's rack is unmilks, so he's got to work out what to do with that now with some floaters on the board. Austin would have been thinking about that himself. He would have thought about whether Unmilks goes with any uh, floating tiles. Looking at the uh, Zizava in my hand, I can see that Lumpkins would have been the only eight and Austin didn't have a P, so he wasn't going to accidentally give him a floater for a, an eight-letter word. But he would have had a little think about that before playing Adnexa. Be interesting to see later in the game whether Lewis gets a chance to hook an L on Adnexa. Could do, even do it on this go. He could play uh, Milk and Adnex, Adnexal. And then that would be uh, interesting to see Austin's reaction at that point. Adnexal doesn't take a, a back hook, so no S Adnexals. It's just an adjective. Option. But it'll be interesting to see uh, if that does get played later in the game or even on this move.
just preempting uh, Lewis's move. Austin's got lenience for an eight-letter play through the E in Adnexa if it doesn't get blocked. Very likely it will get blocked, though, because uh, Lewis will be looking to score around that X, play a parallel play to the X. Quackle likes Lum, L-U-M, underneath, starting on K9, which would take out the chance of lenience. And it looks like that's what Lewis is doing. In fact, play in the same play to Lunk for 23 also. Interesting that uh, Lewis has used uh, used his L up now. There are still two to come, given that there's one on Austin's rack. And the Adnexal place is still available with an LK word. Milk, I suppose, again, is a possibility. Lenience is gone now, and as far as I can remember, there are no other eights. No, that was the only one, and it's been blocked. So Austin will be playing a non-bonus move unless he tries something, which will be challenged off. Austin C goes with Lunk to make Clunk, then he'd have to find a word through the NC that uh, would be there in the N and N and the N of Adnexa and his C in front of Lunk. Could play lenience. In fact, no, he couldn't because that would be three E, so we'd have to find some other word. We'd be looking to play off one of the Ns, probably one of the E's. Although two E's aren't always that big a problem. Austin taking his time with this move. Early days, but these are the sorts of positions that can swing a game. I was watching the previous game where Austin had a blank on his rack and he played a, a four-timer instead of a, a triple from the middle square and as it turned out that would have been the, the better move because Phil, his opponent in that game, banged down bat women onto the B when Austin could have used the B for a, a bonus of his own. He wasn't to know obviously but that's just how it went. You can't really preempt uh, things like that. Austin does know that uh, Lewis has an S on his rack because he saw all seven tiles on the uh, opening move when he challenged on Milk's off. So he knows that Lunk hook is going to be uh, a hot spot for Lewis. Lunk's and something coming down. Lewis has also got an M on his rack, so that's one scoring tile to boost the score of whatever word he plays in the O column. Michael likes Kennel here. Turn over a lot of tiles, scores quite nicely. Keeps the C for the clunk hook. Jess is pointing out that uh, knowing that MIS is on your opponent's rack, Kennel doesn't fare quite so well. A play of uh, a lower scoring play of NIE to block the lunk hook uh, does better slightly. Making ANN and KI, AN and KI. Interesting Austin taking quite so long on this move. Obviously we don't know how the, the game's gonna pan out. Time taken at this beginning of the game will obviously affect time being able to be taken on moves later in the game that might need some thought. Just seeing a camera shot now of uh, Austin deep in thought. Sporting a Mohican. A 
Okay, he's finally made a move. It scored 16, so I'm guessing it's the nigh play that Quackle really liked. In fact, it's Nip L for the same score as NIE. Partially blocking the Lunx hotspot. Obviously, words with SL in are still playable, but nothing like as easy to play there as it was before. While we uh, await Lewis's move, we can see that Austin picked uh, three pretty good tiles for scoring anyway. J, O, I. Con G jumped out at me straight away. Not sure where it would play, but it's on the rack anyway. Con G would be a place to play it, not for many points because the J misses the double letter squares. But it's a nice word nonetheless. Again, preempting Lewis's move. If Lewis were to stick a T out in the open, Austin would have ejection. Don't know how likely that's going to be given the, the nature of Lewis's play being only sort of opening when it needs to be. Keep it tight otherwise. Jesse's microphone picked up an announcement of a score of four. Where it's going to be playing. Well, I see HPS, lifts or lights down from the L of Austin's nil. Scores 42, takes the uh, S off of Austin's rack, sorry, off of Lewis's rack. Still three more to come, and the two blanks, obviously. 42 for an S is well worth it, as uh, most players would agree. With only one vowel to play with, I think uh, using the S for a score was definitely the move there. Lewis did play a T, but not in a place where ejection would, fit, uh, would go, so uh, no chance for Austin to bonus on this go. Could play con G's on uh, row 15, that would double the J, block the uh, possibility of an eight letter word ending in S that uh, Lewis might play. Does take both E's off of Austin's rack, so unlikely he'll do that. Another hook for the uh, J is Jan, J A double N, on the A double N on the board at the moment. Could play Joe there, J-O or J-O-E, but very risky opening a nine-timer or a hook if it were to be the J-O play. Again, just Moving one move ahead before we see what Austin does. Uh, looking at Lewis's rack, the pickup actually leads to a superb eight letter word that I'm pretty sure Lewis will know. Fremitus on the uh, row 15 there, the S that we've been talking about. So if Austin doesn't block that S, either deliberately or accidentally, he's going to be facing a 90 plus point move, given that Lewis knows Fremitus. That's just pointing out that she can see uh, Aust Lewis's rack and can see that he's got the FREMIT spelled out, ready to go. Okay, I'll make the move. And um, it off shortly. Still cut. Ah, I can see uh, Austin played his J in the centre of the board. Reasonable. 26 or so. Bring a nice back. D. 
did block the S, and with that, the sound goes Remitus from Lewis. Lee in the lead now, 71 point lead. Shouldn't take Austin too long to come back though in the middle part of this game because he picked the uh, first blank with O and a B. B and C together aren't brilliant, but when you've got a nice balanced rack around them, three, three nice fouls and obviously the blank to help, we should be looking at a bonus fairly soon. Ebonics is one that I saw without cheating with a bit of a look I can see that there are loads well not loads there's Benzoic Bicorn Binocle Combine and Ebonics those are the sevens looking for some eight letter words what else have we got uh, well there's not many single floaters there's some two letter floaters but not many single floaters the C and the H don't appear to be giving anything. No, so it's going to be a seven-letter word. Maybe using that Joe hook, that lovely S in front of Joe, to make uh, Ebonics coming down. Combine we're playing row 14, hooking the F of Fremitus for a nice score as well. So there's, there's options here for Austin. I think he will play a bonus. I don't think he would delay it and score with the B or the C or both. Bonus on the next day. But that's Austin style. If he's got a bonus and it's not uh, too low scoring, I think he'll play it. Quackle is saying that the highest scoring bonus is uh, Binocle, B I N O C L E, with the blank as the L. That would get the C on the triple letter square. That's why it's scoring the most. Not what Austin's playing, though. Either he didn't see it or he prefers the defence of the C in com combine on uh, the 14B square. Harder to get underneath that. 479 takes him back into the lead now. So nice, even gain. They're always nice with the one player. Doesn't just blast off into 100 points. But they are fun to commentate on in a way. You have to think as the player find how best to minimize your chances of coming back. But when both players are in the game, it's uh, fun. Okay, so after Fremit, Lewis kicked the balance rack for the vowels, P, 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 Y for the. No U to go with that Q, but. Uh, all the top players will know all their Q words without a U, and this straight away gets rid of the Q. Never good to hang on for it for too long. It's played cough, Q O P H, Hebrew letter, I think, possibly wrong on that. For 36, so not only has he got rid of his Q, he's got uh, a good score for it as well. After Austin played a bonus, he picked a balanced rack, four vowels, three consonants. It's balanced, but it's awful. A triple letter, three A's, and a V, and a W. The worst consonants, people would probably say. There are three-letter words that can dump two A's and one of the V's and all the W, A-W-A -A and A-V-A. -A. Looking around for a place to score with those. Doesn't look immediately where that's possible. W goes in front of the EN on the uh, J6 square, making WEN. That's a scoring spot for the uh, W. Maybe WAID or WADI. Wadi. That would still keep two A's and a V, though. That would be the uh, issue with that. It would score well, but it wouldn't leave the rack in a healthy position for a quick bonus next time. Possibility of AWA under Adnector. Making jaw and odor. Possibility. A. Okay, I don't think he's played underneath the gem. 
Oh, he has, yeah. Okay. 26 was the score announced for that move. I think uh, it's just not quite on my screen, so I'm just adding it up myself. But, yeah, that puts Austin right back in it again after cough. Two points in the game, one nine three, one nine one to Lewis with Lewis next. Lewis kept A E T Y, fairly balanced, only the Y, the awkward tile. He actually picked duplicates all the way along, A E G, so he's got four vowels and three consonants, but double A's and double E's. Looking to sort that problem out as soon as possible. Move has been played already, I heard, in the room. Okay, he's taken that hot, hot spot off. Hot spot W's now been taken by a Y. Yay, or Yay, I'm sure the pronunciation there, scores 30. Gets rid of the Y, the awkward tile, and one of each of the A's and the E's. That's the best leave that Lewis could have given himself there. Again, the move... The hook move actually takes some uh, front hooks, E-Y-E-N and S-Y-E-N, so very likely they'll get taken in this game. One of those. And while we wait for Austin to make a move, Lewis picked a super uh, set of four tiles to go with his leave. He's got uh, altered on his rack, I can see. Redelt other things, I'm sure. Just putting uh, Austin's rack into Quackle, see what he's got. No sevens. The eight letter words are needing a floater that's not on the board. Reinvade, derivate, readvise. So uh, Austin will be quickly working out that uh, he's going to be playing a waiting move. Doesn't want to play off too many of these really good tiles. Probably the V. And one of the E's and probably one other tile because V, E or E, V aren't words and uh, around the board to get rid of just the V and the E. There's not a place to do it. Eve, the V, E in Fremitus, I suppose. Okay, here comes the move. Oh, that's played off a lot of tiles, six tiles. It's taken the yellow hook off. Okay. Very for play. Keeping one E. So in the lead as well by one point, but nothing really. Just having a look at his pickup while we wait for Lewis. He picked only one vowel, so he's got two vowels and five consonants. He's picked an S with that uh, high turnover play. Gorsy is a word that jumps out, G O R S Y. I'm sure there's better, but we'll come back to that rack now. Lewis more than likely will be bonusing here. As I say, he's got uh, altered and redelt and others. He'll be looking for the best place to hook those or looking for a floater to get an eight-letter word down. Of eight letter words according to Zizifer. Can't see any that are that defensive or that actually play at all. So it might have to be hooking the A of Awa and playing on the uh, ten, number 10 row. Varied, the previous move by Austin, doesn't take a single tile in front. There's no overread, if you were wondering. Let's take extensions, unvaried, chiveried, that would be nice, and a, an 11 letter word, charivered, or however, however that's pronounced, charivered, maybe. Not going to get played. Back to the actual 
team. Um, he did play a bonus. He did play in the only real place to play, with A and Awar, opening up for Austin. So he's hoping that Austin saw too much there. Related was the uh, word he's gone for. As it's turned out, sticking an R out was about the best he could have done because Austin's already got two. Gorsi, the word I mentioned before, is playable on that triple, getting uh, the Y doubled as well, so it would score nicely, 39, but it would use the R on the board and not the R's on Austin's rack, so uh, Austin probably won't be doing that. He's facing a 64-point deficit, so he needs the bonus, not this move obviously, but within one or two moves of whatever he plays on this move. Looking around the board, there aren't that many lanes open for bonuses, so maybe he'll be looking to create some more. Just flicking our attention across to Lewis's rack. Obviously, that's something Austin can't do. We can see that the E in related is going to give Austin anodizes or adonizes. It doesn't get blocked. Interesting to see if... Uh, Austin does take the triple off, because if he takes the triple off, he'll block anodizes and adonizes. But he may want to leave that R because he's so far behind and needs bonuses himself. Even if Lewis doesn't get the bonus, he's going to score 40 or more with the uh, with the Z, because there's ZO, ZA on C13, which are unlikely to get blocked as well as the bonus. We shall see. Yes, let's just put up uh, Quackle's thoughts on this move. It does come in at second best, only a 20% chance of winning. Nothing above 20% with any move. Gyros in the same place. Okay, he's announced a score of 20. Let's see where that's going to be. Uh, could be that he's played Orgy. Yes, he's played Orgy. Sorts out the rack nicely, gets rid of uh, the Y and one of the R's and the G, which isn't always a good tile to keep. So he's got the best keep, ERS. He's created an, another bonus name because ODA, obviously, you can put a, an S in front, SODA. On downside of that move is that it didn't block adonizes or anodizes. So more than likely we'll be seeing Lewis do that straight away. Can't see why he wouldn't. He might be thinking about the fact that it opens up the triple or opens up another triple, but it also restricts the uh, A8 triple, so I can't think of a reason why he wouldn't be doing this move. He'll have seen it, for sure. Obviously a long way to go in this game, but uh, if Lewis does go on to win it, it's fantastic for the tournament in terms of keeping it an unknown winner right till the end. I'm sure Austin won't agree. Two uh, game was uh, halved on the previous round. Could actually disappear entirely on this game. Okay, I think Lewis has made his move and he did play one of the two bonuses. He's played Anodizes. Very little between the two, adonizes or anodizes. Both uh, a very hot spot at A4 for a, a high score for a while. The Ys are gone, it would have to be yes, or maybe an A as well to go there later. Austin was punished, if you want to call it that, with a triple letter pickup, three T's to go with his ERS, and then one more vowel, another E. 
So he's got uh, tetters. I don't think tetters is a word. Let's have a look. What is a word? I didn't know that. Tetters. There's also stret, S-T-R-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. He'll be looking for somewhere to play those if he can. Some words you might have. There's only a couple, both uh, with the floater at the beginning. Attester, one who attests, and utterist, the most utter. Some of the uh, comparatives and superlatives in our words list. Beg a belief, but utterist is a uh, one of them. No floater you for it though, and attester isn't yet played. I can hear Austin's score announced. It wasn't a big, big number, so I think he's just picking off uh, a couple of tiles, maybe. In as many lanes open as he can. Oh, of course, yeah, he will get a bonus down. Unless he hasn't seen it. No, he's either missed tetters or uh, chose not to play it. I think he missed it. So tet on the A column, taking off the triple. Within seconds, Lewis has come back with the play that was most likely to go down the A column using the uh, hotspot on A4. Voip, nice word, V-O-I-P. Word, I think. Scores uh, 43 and puts this game almost beyond doubt now, even though... Austin's got a chance of one bonus, he needs two, and the tiles are running out very quickly. I'm sure he'll take the same hook this time, because he won't. Unless there's a better bonus somewhere, maybe through the A for a double word, uh, double word. and the A in related. Busters plays in two places, the soda hook uh, and also down the side of anodizes, much higher score in that position, so that's why Austin's going to play it there. It also creates uh, a famous line in the beginning with B on the uh, number one row. Now, all depending on Austin's pick up here, whether we're going to have an end game or not. This is a brilliant first ahead with into an end game. And if Austin gets blank here, we could be looking at a, a tight finish. Let's see. He got it, he got it. Three vowels, three consonants, and the blank. So we could be looking at a grandstand finish yet again from a game involving Austin. Jess is pointing out that there is a bonus line. It's um, possible that it won't get blocked unless Lewis really takes his time now to think with the unseen tiles where Austin might go, given that Lewis will have to think negatively that Austin blank and where might he play a bonus. There's a lot of lines. The number one row beginning with B, the number three row hooking the soda, and as Jess pointed out, four men, F-O-R-E-M-E-N, using the R blank as an R, goes underneath uh, the E and the A-D in related. Let's his hands out. Lewis was going to go for a score. He might use the W and the H underneath combine on the triple. And then obviously four men does play. Just seeing a message that there's only three in the bag, so uh, Lewis has really got to think about leaving one, otherwise he would lose to a bonus play, more than likely, unless he could outrun him with a big score on this move. Lewis might be thinking if he picked, if he did score with his W and his H, but then picked one of the F and or the M or both, he might lose to a bonus, so he really can't afford to play more than two tiles. This is the first time I've commented on Aust uh, commentated on Austin's games, but uh, I've watched a heck of a lot of them, and he always seems to make these uh, dramatic finishes either work for him or just miss out sometimes. But 
There was a high probability of picking the blank after Busters with uh, 10 tiles to dip into, but uh, to get the balanced rack and to get uh, a chance of a bonus straight after Busters, it's uh, going to be really exciting to watch this end game now. One possibility is uh, OH making path. Both words doubled. That would be a nice high score. Leave one in, one in the bag. Lewis's current lead is 52. So with a score of about 30, that would put him 80 plus ahead. Four men does score about that many. So uh, we'd be looking at level scores more or less going into uh, the last <coughs> throws of the dice. And with Lewis having the extra turn, as it were, it could be that Lewis is going to win this after all. But we shall see. Jess just pointing out that four men scores 81. So if we mentally add that on to Austin's score, that would put him on 430. 29 ahead of Lewis, if Lewis didn't make a move. But obviously Lewis is going to make at least two more moves in this game. And Austin will have one tile to make a move with. I don't think any of the tiles in the bag he can get stuck with. So he will score 81, then one more move with a one point play, with a one tile play, I should say. So 430, 440, say. So if Lewis can get to about 415, two moves, very doable with an H and a W. This could go Lewis's way after all, even though Austin is going to play two bonuses in back to back. There are some players right at the top of the game, and Lewis is possibly one of them, who could go through all the combinations of racks that uh, Lewis might have that be bonus. With three tiles unseen, that's very hard, but he'll be he'll be thinking about all the bonuses that Austin might have, especially with a blank in that makes it quite. But in fact, Lewis hasn't taken any more time. He's made a move. He has only played two tiles, so there's one left in the bag played W-O for a good score, 29 points. So he is uh, 82 ahead. So uh, if Austin does play four men, which I'm sure he'll see and he'll probably play as well, it's going to be a one-point game after all the tiles are played out of the bag and it's just the tiles on the rack to go. Austin might be thinking, is it possible to delay a bonus by one move and play a, a setup in some way? But I think he's just got to go for it and see what happens. I'm looking at a quackle simulation that says 0% win chance on any move, including the bonus. I don't know if those are correct or whether those are just what it always comes up with until you set it running on a sim. It is possible that they are all correct, that Austin has a 0% chance of winning from this position, even with the 81-point bonus, we'll see. Not sure what the time situation is, how long Austin's got to analyse this. Jess is just letting me know, Austin's got three minutes left. And Lewis has nine. So plenty of time for Lewis. If Austin makes his move, as we expect, the bonus to put him one point behind. Lewis will be working out with the final tile what the maximum score Austin can get. Obviously, Austin will be catching Lewis with some of his tiles. So Lewis will be working out what that sacrifice is that he'll have to give to Austin. And we'll just have to outscore that with a move. At the moment, I can't see Lewis's rack. I think it had a an H on it from the previous play and a U. And then I think he picked the G. Ah, oh, there we go. So we've got, uh, it's balanced and it's got plenty of scoring potential. I haven't really been looking to see what word he might play. But possibly underneath the C of combine, he can score about 30. GHI. 
GHI would score exactly 30, putting him 31 ahead, 4 on his rack. So next 22 ahead, that should be enough. Yeah, I can see this yeah, for Lewis, which is great for the tournament, as I was saying. This is Boston, one of my favourite players. Uh, in terms of seeing grandstand, we're going to get one. Okay, there we go. So Austin's played the bonus. So back to back bonuses. Often a way to win a game, but I think Lewis just had enough uh, of a lead with the anodizers and premises that were his bonuses in this game. Austin drew an eye, so we're looking around now to see what the highest he can score with that is. I don't think he'll fall for Ivoried. I varied. PU in the bottom corner, PIU would score a lot, 14. I think Lewis will be able to outrun that. He's got plenty of time just to make sure he doesn't uh, mess up this end game. There's actually some cracking scores on offer. 42 at the top for Burgel, B U R G H A L, adjective from Berg. 35 for Hug, Path, and uh, other words. Not reading that wrong. Uh, D3. Oh, Pat you. Do not know Pat you. E A T U S H and N E G would be the uh, overlaps, and hug would be the main word for 35. Burgle, if uh, Lewis sees it, would obviously be the, the word that gives him the best spread at the end of this game. Just pointing out to me, because she can obviously see what's going on, that Lewis did start to put Burgle down, but then took it back. I think he's worried about losing the game by playing a non-word even though he probably does know the word though I've done it myself I've sacrificed a few points in an end game to avoid playing a, a non-word even though Burgle isn't a non-word Lewis will just have that simple doubt perhaps play something safer for a few fewer points as indeed he has he's not played Burgle he's played I think I heard him say, yep, yeah, he's played the move I was suggesting, GHI underneath combine for 30. Putting him 31 ahead. He'll be giving Austin 8 in count back, plus 4 and minus 4. So he's 22 ahead, sorry, 23 ahead as of Austin's move. So Austin can't score 24. Therefore, Lewis is going to win. I'm sure we'll see PIU go down fairly quickly. I can't see anything higher than that. Lewis will just be checking quickly. Yep, it's the best by quite a way. There's another word that scores eight, ICH, which has been created by uh, Lewis's play, but Austin will play uh, PIU, I'm sure. Down goes to IU. That's the game over. Last tile played off of one player's rack signifies the end of the game. And Jess will just put the uh, scores up on the 460 to Lewis, 457. Okay, just being adjusted slightly. 457 to Lewis, 448 to Austin. So, nine point win. Narrow win, but they all count. Uh, Lewis. I think that puts uh, Lewis level on wins now with Austin, and doesn't put up a great high at the top.
thanks to the players. Thanks to Jess for streaming that. And I will be commentating on round 17. I think Paul Allen will be back for round 16. And then hopefully I'll be commentating not on a dead rubber, but on the game that decides the tournament in an hour or so's time. Thanks, Jess.